This is City Road Cemetery in Sheffield, the largest cemetery in the city. The cemetery was opened in 1881. It now covers an area of 100 acres. As you come into the cemetery, there is this area which is full of memorials. A sort of memorial chapel. There are hundreds, probably thousands of plaques in here. Let me just show you a few that you can read. These are dated 1943, 1905, 1917. As you come in, you see that the older part of the churchyard is on a higher level and there's these flights of steps to get up to it. Up on my right is a chapel of rest. And down to my left I can see graves stretching almost as far as I can see. These are clearly the modern graves, the later part of the cemetery. Well I've climbed the steps and I'm looking back now at the entrance portal and the little chapel of remembrance that we saw. To my left a lot of large memorials and up there is a, a chapel. If I start from the entrance portal again and pan right again a lot of very large memorials and way down beyond those is the section we saw with all the new burials. There's a lot to see here. As we get up to the higher point we can look further around and there are memorials just as far as we can see. This is a very large cemetery. It is the largest in Sheffield, still currently used. I don't really know how to show you all these memorials. They just stretch as far as you can see in all directions. Let me start with the War Memorial which is close to the highest point in the cemetery and very central. The approximately 70 names of men on the back wall are for those who were buried in the cemetery here but have no stone to mark their grave. It's quite likely no one is quite sure where they are buried so they are commemorated on this wall. I'll show you a couple of the panels. Private J.M. Barrett, then Private A. Barton, age 35, Sergeant T.H. Beaumont, 37, Ordinary Seaman H. Binney, aged 18, and there we go down the plaque. And just one more of the eight plaques. Well, it's quite impossible to get around all this cemetery. You'd need several days. You'd need a bus service to take you to the various points of it. I'll just pick out one or two memorials that catch my eye as I wander around. This one of an angel standing in front of the cross holding some flowers, possibly a lily, in her arms. And the inscription is to Mary, the wife of Henry Wood and mother of Peter, 1965. And then we come down to some flowers which are reasonably recent. 
I think they're going to be silk flowers. And the mention of Dad, another angel, in a position of prayer. You see the wings come right down and are actually longer than she is when they're folded. The inscription beneath is too difficult to read. This one is a flying angel with a finger pointing heavenward. At the bottom it's Evelyn, the wife of Roy Walker. This is a statue of a woman sleeping on the grave, which is actually bigger than a real life person would be. And this is for Anne Elizabeth, the wife of Arthur Atkinson. Another sorrowing or sleeping lady on this memorial. Slightly different posture from the other one. No obvious name to give you on this one, but very nicely done. Close by is the war grave with the poignant message on the foot of it. Sergeant T. Warhurst, air bomber, died in 1943, aged 27. But the family have added on the base Beautiful memories, darling. Your dear wife, Jane, and baby, Tony Lorraine. This one is a tree trunk with the branches cut off and the anchor and the cross tied to it. And on the base we see it's John Henry Turner, 1896. And just in front of that we can see one in a very similar pattern, but it is different. Again we've got the anchor and the cross, and the base of this one, we read it's Emily, the wife of John Davy, 1899. Here we have the woman hanging on the cross, mourning the death with some uh, flowers or wheat sheaves in her hand. And further down, this is in loving memory of Arthur Willie, the husband of Adelaide Kate Agatha Swindon, 1935. And a very similar one here, depicted slightly differently. And this is to John Robert Hayhurst, 1902. A very large family tomb alongside one of the paths here. The width of at least three normal plots, probably a lot more. On the front we learn that it's uh, Thomas Waterhouse, 1821. 1900 and then Sarah. I would think given the size of the tomb there are other members of the family interred there also. There's just so much to see here. Paths going off in all directions and everywhere you look the memorials stretch away. Another path there with hundreds, possibly thousands more memorials down there. War grave here to Corporal E. Benson, Army Catering Corps, 1947 and age 27. They say that an army marches on its stomach. And passing an area of children's graves, always a very poignant place. I don't think this has been done as well as it could. I've been impressed with a lot of the graveyard, but this area really could be just made look a little bit nicer. Such a special place where children are buried. This one has a depiction of Christ 
hanging on the cross and beneath that we have the first name is Andrew the wife of Anne Donnellan and then next door the next monument to it we have a picture of Christ looking very mournful and unhappy and that is Gertrude Mary Gleason a pair of very large statues this one shows an angel wings apart wings open holding a cross and at the base we learn that it's for Winifred Finnegan an angel here she would have had a finger pointing skywards but uh, her hand has been lost they seem to have been made as a separate component on these statues and then fixed on and then over the decades they become unfixed and the angels lose their hands and the memorial is Mary daughter of John and Mary Dempsey 1938 just short of five years and then John and Mary also Well, I've moved right through the graveyard now to the far side still plenty to see some nice views of the hills behind nice statue and we learn as we move down the first name on here is Mary Ann Sharp wife of Joseph Sharp I see here what looks like an old chapel of rest it has a sort of bell tower but it's fenced off and the windows are all boarded up and it's losing a lot of tiles on the roof which is usually fairly fatal for a building because the water gets inside the very tall memorial is in memory of the Belgian refugees who came to live in Sheffield during World War I when their country was occupied by the Germans. Some 3,000 came to live in Sheffield and there are around 50 names on the memorial of those that died here. This is one of the four panels. Francois van Dijk, Remy van den Eek, Armand de Berg and so on down the panel there are some more names here there are two further panels with more names over in this part of the graveyard are many many more new graves we have to be aware of is there's actually a funeral going on it's almost non-stop the funerals here several each day immediately in front is the Islamic section with their tradition of making a small garden on each of the burial plots makes a very picturesque situation I can't show you too much because there's quite a lot of people in this section and then when you look further afield you can see so many of the new graves this is just one amazing cemetery just so much to see it's always good when the memorial tells you a little bit about the person ideally with a picture this one's got the badge of Sheffield United Football Club Gary Cahill, age 52 we know what his interest was this one has uh, a regimental badge on the left and the chap Paul Anthony Reardon is in a uniform with a white pith helmet as some of you will know 
what that is and if you do please put it in the comments below well this one makes it 2-0 to Sheffield United Dale Green aged 46 years another fan Stephen Warwick Shepherd he has his motorcycle pictured on his memorial And Arthur Rowan makes it 3-0 to Sheffield United. What is nice about this grave, they've done a complete montage of pictures down here of the life of Arthur and Patricia. Ken Hicks has a picture of a jockey and a racehorse. And his wife Joan is mentioned beneath. Well, just to even things up a bit, Christopher Akers has the badge for Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. And another supporter buried here, Neville Cholleton, Sheffield Wednesday. And if you really want to make a point about what team you support, Here's another Sheffield Wednesday Football Club supporter. The stone, which is actually a board, and the edging is all home done. So it's all been done on a budget, but it clearly makes a point about where Pauline's allegiance lay. Well, this one I don't recognize. So again, if any of you understand what that flag is, please note it below, Mildred, Udora Worrell, 2015. Unusual one here with a very large angel. And it's to Miss Lois Elizabeth, who was only four weeks old when she died. And they put a picture of the beautiful young girl on the grave. 2008. Quite a few years ago, but the grave is still wet, well tended, well looked after. And the graves just stretch on and on. And football is big in this city. Jordan Maples Douglas, 23. You see the two badges for Sheffield United. You see the decoration is done in red and white. And then at the end of the grave is a bench in the red and white colors of United. And here's a grave that's just been uh, completed only a few days ago, I would think, covered with the Sheffield United colors. And on the fence behind, Sheffield United flag and when we come down in front of the grave, there is a stone bench and cast into that is Sheffield United Football Club, 100% blades. Football is very important in Sheffield. Over to one side of the graveyard is a area for some of the forces graves. Very many are scattered throughout the graveyard, mixed in with all the other graves. Most of the moth are British servicemen, but one or two have a different shaped stone. This is for a chap from the Polish forces. This again is a different shaped stone, but it is for British men, air raid warden, ARP ambulance driver and ARP rescue service all commemorated on the one stone. This is another shaped stone and this is for a Dutchman, J. Klok, 1889 to 1944. And over to one side is this memorial to those who died in the Second War 
and who are cremated and the rain is hammering down and finally in this area this plaque commemorates those men from the first and second war who lie buried in Sheffield Ward Send Church Cemetery well this is one large cemetery possibly one of the largest I've been to I haven't even been to all the areas you could spend days here I'm going to have to stop now though because the rain has started to come down very heavy put it on your list City Road Cemetery in Sheffield fascinating place till the next time